It's been quite the season, hasn't it, for Derisa Gay so far at PSG. This is, of course, a man who joined the French champions in July from Everton for 30 million euros. He's made 30 appearances for them so far this season, 64 caps. Uh, with Senegal, he was brilliant, wasn't he? In that first game against Real Madrid, in which Real Madrid completely, in which PSG, sorry, completely dominated, but then was highlighted by Lequipe in that game against Borussia Dortmund that he only got a two out of ten. So harsh was the criticism. It's going to be interesting to see how he responds to that, isn't it, in this second leg against Dortmund? Uh, yeah, no, obviously, Dusa Gay comes into it. I mean. I think a lot of it depends on how this game is, is, is played. Something we didn't mention was the fact that um, Dortmund on Saturday, they had a, a very tough uh, Bundesliga clash against Borussia Mönchengladbach um, in a very physical game, actually. Um, whereas Paris Saint-Germain, of course, their game on Saturday away to Strasbourg uh, was called off due to the coronavirus situation. So you wonder also, I think, if, if physically um, that might give Paris Saint-Germain that little bit of, of an edge in terms of being better rested. Don, you obviously know Idrissa Gay well, being a big Everton fan that you are. How highly do you rate him? I think he's exceptional. Um, if go back to that Real Madrid game when uh, PSG won 3-0. I mean, it was a 4-3-3 a system that uh, Thomas took likes to play, and he went against that, uh, against Dortmund. I think he panicked slightly, changed it completely. Um, he played with, with, with three centre-halves. He had Verratti in midfield, who doesn't really suit Idrissa Gay. I think he likes another one. Marquinhos played in that Real Madrid game, so you had the three in there, which suits him. I think he's one of the best at getting around the place and, and you know, trying to screen his centre half. So he's went through a number of systems, um, but I think he's best when he's in a three because he can go ratting for the ball, he can close people down, and he sets the tempo. When he's left in a two, I'm not so sure that's uh, his best position, really. Do you agree, Steve? He was the victim of the setup in that first leg against Dortmund? Um, you know, I'd, I'd rather talk about his character, to be honest. You know, mm. you were saying, is he going to be able to bounce back? A player like him, the job he does, it's all the dirty stuff. Right. That means you need to have a, be a certain type of character. You, mu you must enjoy getting stuck in and doing all that dirty thing. So I don't think there's any way that this guy turns up in this game and does anything other than, than stop in the middle of the park, Borussia Dortmund getting forward, as, certainly as much as they did in the first leg. He's in the model of N'Golo Kante. There, right. there is no denying that. <clears throat> You're almost wanting to find, well, who's going to be this next guy that is going to come out of nowhere and, and is going to turn out to be a great presence in the middle of midfield. But much like N'Golo Kante, there has been moments in which coaches like Mauricio Sarri, for example, has played him out of position and doesn't quite look nearly the player as effective as he has been in the past. And so... Similar to that, Idrissa Gay, if you put him in front of the back line and you tell him, hey, you just chase around and kick anything that moves and just be that presence and do the things that Stevie is alluding to and, and, and don't worry about any of the other stuff. Let the, the, let the playmaking guys take care of creative stuff in the front third. Let them do that work. You do your job. Run around sideways, backwards, protect the back four. Do that, simplify for him. He's going to do the job for you. Gab, do you think Thomas Tuchel has learned his lesson after the first leg? Look, I mean, he tried a different setup against an unorthodox team that was very inconsistent, a little bit like, uh, like his setup. But I have a lot of faith in, in, in Thomas Tuchel. I mean, you know, I, I know we're talking about fiddling with this too much and, you know, play, play Drusage here, play him there. But... You know, ultimately, I don't think this game is going to be decided by Idrissa Gay. It's, it's going to be decided by the, the match winners that are out there. Um, I don't see this being a very tactical battle, even though arguably for the first hour, um, maybe the first leg was. But I, I think Paris Saint-Germain are, are going to go all out and they're going to try to make their superstars beat Borussia Dortmund superstars. And into that, other factors might come in, like, you know, what's up with Jaden Sancho and his relationship with, with Lucien Favre at the weekend. Obviously, he was on the bench. He came on. Uh, there's some issues there, potentially, reportedly. Um, I think factors like that are going to weigh much more heavily in this. Don, I mentioned the fact that he got two out of ten with Lakeep. When you were playing, mm. did you look at the newspaper after every match to see what mark you'd given? 
I mean, you, you sort of do. You, you have a little a look. Yes. It doesn't. That's a yes. It, it doesn't. <laughs> it's a yes. Well, okay. you do. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you do. But I, I can remember playing some games where I've been voted man of the match on, on a Saturday and looked at the papers the next day and seen myself getting a, a, a five or a six. You just think, well, this guy obviously wasn't even at the game because 24 hours earlier you're picking up the man of the match award. So sometimes you can have a little chuckle. If you've had a shocker, you know you've had a bad game and you might not even look at it, but you might just to see if they give you a better mark than you even think you deserve. But... I don't think players look at a newspaper, see a mark, and then dip in their confidence because of that. Normally, players, if you've got anything about you, you know if you've played well, if you've played bad. Yes, you'll have a little look, but it doesn't really affect it's, you. It's really simple, Dan. When you play badly, you don't read newspapers. When right. you play well, you read everyone. <laughs> everyone look, at you <laughs> look at me. Look at me. Look at me. So you never <laughs> even see the twos or the threes. That, that, that's all right. They that's never, the way it works. They never exist. Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. And for more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for premium content and live streaming, subscribe to ESPN+.